the hour for revival. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and of course, it's always the hour for revival. And like my brother Don Coyne used to say, we're letting revival roll. Hallelujah, Jesus. I miss that brother so much. He was an awesome friend and an awesome inspiration in the gospel. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, tonight we're going to be doing a very interesting video. And I'm going to entitle it, The Missed Mysteries and Misconceptions of Jonah the Prophet. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me pray before we have Sister White come sing the song, power in the blood. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just thank you for your presence tonight. I thank you for your word, which is already anointed, going before us and standing behind us. Lord, I thank you that you're going to confirm the word with signs following tonight. Father, we cast our bread upon the water, and we thank you that it's going to come back as pure gold. In Jesus' name, eh? we press our bread upon the water and things are going to come back as pure gold. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for tonight. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited. I'm like a horse biting at the bridle, waiting to jump out of the starting gate, and I hope to the Lord that Sister White tunes in soon so she can sing the song with me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, G, or for the Lord. I'm, I'm praying that she'll tune in and sing the song. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down, hallelujah, Jesus, glory, Lord, amen. Thank you, Jesus, glory, Lord, amen. I got the green light, so I'm just hoping I don't get the red light. I'm waiting for somebody to tune in. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Sister White, there you are. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Hold on. Praise God, the eternal reign, supreme and mighty. I do not see Henry. Says he's joining. Are you there? I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I could hear you there. Uh, the phone talked through, and I had a, uh, I had a moment where I couldn't see you for a second. I'm glad to see you tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise Thank Jesus. You, Jesus. So you're going to sing Power in the Blood, and I'm excited about talking about Jonah. I mean, this is the time of Jonah, spiritually speaking. Oh, yes. Especially with what's coming with the um, the Tob, the X. Talk you about know, having the X factor. <laughs> yes. You know, tonight at Bible study, this the subject that was given, the, the main um, speaker that normally gives Bible study was sick tonight, and we had a guest speaker. And he asked Jesus, what do you want me to speak about? And he said, when Jesus shows up. Mm. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. 
when Jesus shows up. So that is a precursor to what you're getting ready to talk about because Lord, Lord. You, when Jesus shows up, everything changes. Everything changes. Yes. When Jesus shows up, hallelujah. Praise God when Jesus shows up. We are so grateful for that. Mm. Okay. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Yes, there is. Thank you. Would you have sin that you need washed as snow? There mm. is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Are you burdened and feeling low? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. There is power in his blood. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. All power. Oh, power in his blood. I, I'm excited about tonight because Jonah, for some reason, has always been one of my favorite characters to talk about in the Bible. Because, you know, everybody knows you don't want to be a Jonah. You know, oh, <laughs> everybody yeah. knows it. <laughs> but, you know, at least God cared for him and wrote his name down that we might know his story because, you know, there was one prophet that was so disobedient, God never even named him in the Bible. He was just called the disobedient prophet. I mean, that's wow. pretty bad. Yeah. When God called you the disobedient prophet, instead of actually telling your name in the Bible, you know, that's pretty bad. That shows you That's just how cutting off his remembrance of you. You're right. Ooh. You're right because see, I, I've learned it from rabbis. You know, just like you and Ricky. You know that if you remove somebody's name, you cut off their remembrance. You cut off their legacy. Their le his legacy was gone. Mm -hmm. His memory was cut off. You know, I'm telling you, that's prophetic in its own truth. Because if we disobey God, which disobedience is a sin of witchcraft, if we choose to disobey God, then we'll be cut off and not remembered. Amen. And her phone just cut off. I don't think she meant to exit out that quick. <laughs> Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Can people hear me tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. If you've got your Bibles, Turn with me to the whole book of Jonah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. We're going to have a Bible study preaching word tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amidia, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city city and cry against it for their wickedness has come up before me amen thank you jesus praise the lord glory lord amen he told him rise and go to nineveh that great city he, he said go and talk to them tell them go and uh 
cry out against them. The Lord was saying it was a great city. It was full of people, souls that he did not want to end up in hell. And he said, go and warn them. Go cry out against them. Bring them to me. He said, for their wickedness has come up before me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish, which is where Paul was from. Paul saw Tarsus. Tarshish. So he runs and he goes to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, from the presence of the Lord, and, and went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare, therefore. Wait a minute. A lot of preachers preach he uh, that, that he stowed away on the boat. No, the Bible said he paid a fare. He, he paid a toll. He had a ticket. But let me tell you something. Disobedience and sin will take you further than you ever wanted to go, and it will keep you longer than you ever wanted to stay, my friends. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. And went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners, the mariners, mariners, sorry, I couldn't get that word. Thank God the Lord gave me the word right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his own God, little G. Amen. And cast forth the wares that were in the ship, that they cast forth the, the things that was in the ship to lighten the load. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. He was fast asleep. Notice that. When God sent the storm, Jonah was fast asleep. When the enemy sent a storm, Jesus was fast asleep. And Jesus rose and rebuked the storm, but this storm was not sent by the enemy. This storm was sent by God. Amen. Glory to God. Satan's a copycat. He always does a counterfeit move. He tries to copy God. But anyways, God had sent this storm. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen to this, y'all. To lighten it, to lighten down the load, they tossed things overboard. But Jonah was gone down and he lay and was fast asleep in the ship. Asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. Big G, God Almighty. If so, be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said, everyone to his fellow, come and let us cast lots that we may know whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots and the lots fell upon Jonah. Notice that. They were playing lots. They, they were casting lots. They were saying, who, who is this? The, well, uh, who is sin so bad that the gods are angry? They thought the gods were angry, little g's. But it was the ultimate God that was angry. And he was trying to get Jonah's attention. He said, come on, Jonah. Get out of that boat, boy. We got work to do. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. 
But look at this, y'all. They cast lots, and even the demons told on Jonah. They, they said, whew, glory to God. It's Jonah's fault you're in that situation. Then they said unto him, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation? And when, whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? I want your credentials, the shipmaster said. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. And he said unto him, unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? Why hast thou done this? For the presence of the Lord. Wait. Uh, uh, why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Let me just go here to point one. We know he didn't stow away because the Bible said he paid a fare. A price was paid. But he was paying the ultimate price by running from God and his will for his life. His soul was on the line. Matthew 8, 37, Jesus said, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Remember, Samuel said, obedience is better than sacrifice. 1 Samuel 15, 22. It cost them some cargo, but it was costing him his soul. Amen. Glory to God. Another thing I want you to understand. He was on a boat with pagan people. And the Lord allowed the enemy to tell on Jonah. The gods, the little G's, begin to tell, oh, it's Jonah's fault you're in this situation. <laughs> and then he said, for what did you do to make the gods mad? And then he said, I am, the, I am a Hebrew, a servant of the true and living God. They said, okay, then it's God who is angry. They said, get up and see if God will forgive us. Pray for us. You know, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Let me say this. Why? Because your sins will find you out. Numbers 32 and 23. Amen. Numbers 32, 23. Your sins will find you out. Understand something, my friends. I want to share a quick story real quick with you. A friend of mine, I ain't going to give her name on the video, but she was being... She was possessed at one time, and I mean violently possessed. And her, her aunt, who was a nurse, was there when the emergency room brought her in, and she was coughing up blood and black stuff. And her eyes were black as soot. You know, let me just say it like that. They were black, and she was fully possessed and she was you know the aunt grabbed hold of her and said in the name of jesus i rebuke you the enemy turned in that young lady and said what, what are you talking about that it just went it snapped and went to a regular voice instead of a male voice it went to a regular voice and looked at her and said what are you talking about you think you got power in god and it said, let me tell you the sins you're committing and nobody knows about in the office. And I mean, it began to read her mail. And then they said, who do we call? They said, we got to get this girl free. And my friend that was there with her mother, who was a nurse as well, an assistant nurse, she said, let's call Brother HR. She called me a different name, but uh, she called me my given name. But she uh, called me, and Jesus set that young lady free. Nothing I did. But what I'm saying is two things. One, you got to be fasted up and prayed up. And two, you got to know who 
who you are and whose you are in God before you go trying to cast out a demon spirit. All right. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. And the person got totally delivered. But the thing is, you know, the devil read that person's mail because they were trying to, they were living a double life and they were trying to cast out a demon without having a full relationship with Jesus. And that thing called her on it. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God that she got delivered. Amen. Glory to God. She got delivered. That young lady got delivered. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So let me go ahead and say this. Thank you, Jesus. Jonah was on a boat with pagan people. Jonah 1, 6, and 8. But he, he was hiding from God, but his sins found him out, Numbers 32, 23. Now, watch this. Second misconception. He was not dead after they threw him overboard. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He was dead after he got in the belly of the whale. I'm going to show you that. Okay, watch. Second misconception. He was dead. He wasn't dead until after they threw him off the boat. And I'm going to show you that. Watch this right now. Glory, hallelujah, amen. Verse 12. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, then, uh, verse 10, let's go back to verse 10. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? Well, the men knew that he had he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told him so. Verse 11, then said they unto him, what shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea is wrought and was tempest. Verse 12, and he said unto them, take me up, cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Let me show you something right there. When we disobey God, it don't just affect our life. It affects the life of everyone around us. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It don't just bring a storm to our life, but just like when Jesus was on the boat and the storm came, the little boats that was around were affected by the storm too. That That's just like with Jonah. The storm will affect other people around you either for God's glory or if you're out of his will and running from his glory, the storm will affect those around you. So I'd rather him be affected because of God than not because of God. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You know what I mean, y'all. Amen. I, I would rather God be pleased with me. And in the midst of the storm, the enemy sent a storm and God stop it. And everybody around get touched by the glory of God, like in Jesus' case, than to have the storm there because of me. And so I'm, I'm doing stupid when I know better. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mercedes, good, Mercedes, good to have you on here. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was tempest against them. First it came because of Jonah. Now they suffer the consequence because they don't want to get rid of the person that's causing the storm in their life. How many people are losing spiritual cargo and probably going to spiritually lose everything that God has for them if you don't get rid of the people God's trying to tell you to throw out of the boat. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord, Adonai, Yeshua, Jesus, and said, We beseech you not to perish for this man's life, that 
lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, has done it as please as it pleased you thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging, her raging. Then the men feared the Lord, Adonai, Yeshua, Jesus, exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, Adonai, Yeshua, Jesus, and made vows unto him. So what happened? These men got saved even in the midst of Jonah's disobedience. God saved a whole ship of people. He said, I ain't going to let this go to waste. I'm going to take advantage of the situation. Let me tell you something. Sometimes God will cease a storm, but sometimes he'll let you go through a storm to take advantage of it for you and for his glory. Because these people became believers, even through Jonah's disobedience, God won a whole ship to him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory, Lord. Amen. Now, the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Listen. Matthew 12 and 40, Jesus said, As Jonah was in the belly of the well three days and three nights, so must the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. Listen to me now, y'all. He actually said what it was. God created it. Jesus is the creator. And without him, nothing is created. And the Bible said that Jesus called it a fish. Matthew 12, 40, it was called a whale, not a fish. Jesus called it a whale. As Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, so must the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. Listen to me. Jonah found himself in a whale of a mess because of the sin he was in. Listen to me, y'all. Chapter 2. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. This is what's happening. He he is actually coming to now and praying. Listen, he's coming back to life and he's praying. Just like uh, Kenneth Hagin, Dad Hagin, when he died and he went to hell, he actually was praying on his way out of hell. And as he was coming back into his body, he cut back in praying with his body. And he was in his body then, but he cut back in praying the prayer that he was praying in hell. It happened to Jonah too. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Listen, then he recounts what happened to him. Out of the fisher belly, and he said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto Adonai, unto the Lord Yeshua, Jesus, and he heard me out of the belly of hell cried I. Not the well. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Listen, for thou, thou hast kept me, thou hast cast me into the deep, into the midst of the seas, and the floods, listen, compassed me about. All the billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward the holy temple. He's looking to his body. He's having an outer body experience seeing his body. And listen to this, y'all. Then the waters can pass me about even to the soul. He died. The depths closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. He suffocated to death. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. He's going to hell, y'all. He's describing his hell encounter right here in the Bible. I went down to the mountains of the earth. The bottoms of the mountains of the earth. With her bars was about me forever. He was convinced he was never getting out of hell. He said the bars 
were about me forever. It was not the um, story of the rib cage of the whale. No, he was. He left his body. He went under the chambers of the earth. This is the scripture right here recorded, and he ended up behind physical bars under the earth, a prison under the earth. He was held captive. My friends, that day Jonah woke up on the wrong side of paradise because of disobedience. Jonah woke up on the wrong side of paradise. The waters closed round about me. The weeds wrapped around my head. I went down to the bottoms of the earth. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And the and my prayer came unto you into thine holy temple. Thank you, Jesus. He's saying, you heard my prayer in heaven when I was in hell. I don't care what situation you're in. I don't care if you're in a spiritual hell right now. God will still heal, hear you. If you're even in a spiritual hell at this moment, God will hear and he will answer, my friend. Are you understanding what I'm preaching today? From the pulpit. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. When my soul fainted within me, I cried out to the Lord and thou heard me. I remembered the Lord. My prayer came up unto thee, into thy holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercies. Listen. But Verse 9, I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Now that's going to become very interesting and very powerful and potent in just a moment. Amen. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. God still wasn't talking to Jonah at that moment. But he spoke to the fish, and it vomited out Jonah. Jonah came back into his body, and he's re recounting what happened while he was in hell for three days and three nights. And on the third night, he got up out of hell. Amen. God got him out. And he was thanking God for getting him out of hell that it gets deeper than that, though. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. He says, salvation is of the Lord. That's going to become very important in chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Let me tell you something. They, they repented and believed. I'm going to tell you that. I'm getting ahead of myself now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto the unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Not your will, my will is what God was telling Jonah. He said, Your will is different than mine. That that's showing you right there, Jonah had another motive in mind for Nineveh. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city of three-day journey. This is interesting. He went to supernatural time travel and Jonah began to enter the city in one day. And he cried and said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Now wait a minute. You've got to understand what the people of Nineveh believed in. They believed in a fish god named Dagon. But they also believed in another female god named Estar, Estar, where we get Easter from. They served Estar and they served Dagon. Those were two of their main gods. And Dagon was a fish, and so God chose a fish to talk for. <laughs> Hallelujah. God chose a fisherman to be a fish. Hallelujah. He, he swallowed him with a fish and spat him out on the earth. And it's interesting. Somebody must have saw that and went and 
told the king because when Jonah came in looking like the catch of the day, smelling like fish guts, he walked in there looking like walking sushi, okay? Everybody looking at him like, uh, uh, what's going on here? And he said, look what the living true God has done to me. Watch this, y'all. And he said, so the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed the fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Now, wait a minute. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. Forty days they went without food or water. Unless God is sustaining you, you'll die. Okay? But in their situation, they knew it was a 50-50 shot right there. You know, they knew that, hey, either we're going to live or we're getting ready to die anyway. So they went on and fasted 40 days. Hallelujah, Jesus. 40 days and 40 nights. Listen to me, y'all. But look, they put, but let man and beast, verse 8, be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God, the true God. Yea, let them turn away from his, everyone from his own evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Wait a minute. Why did they put sackcloth on an animal? The Lord showed to this revelation years ago and I've never forgot it because they were in mourning and repenting for even sacrificing animals to false gods are you hearing me praise the Lord thank you Jesus glory to God amen thank you Jesus amen praise God they was repenting for killing animals to false gods Psalms 50 10 through 10 12 says that our God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. What's he saying? Our God is rich in mercy, Ephesians 2, 4 through 5. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He's rich in mercy. That cattle on a thousand hills represents the mercy of God reaching out for us. We deserve condemnation. We deserve judgment. But God is looking at the blood that's been sacrificed. Glory to God. The repentance, because the Bible said without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sin. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. But John, Matthew 12 and 41, Jesus said, The people of Nineveh, of that Nineveh, of that day, shall stand on the day of judgment with this generation and condemn it, because one, they believed and repented after hearing the preaching of Jonah from the Lord. And yet one greater than Jonah is here, meaning Jesus. He said, I'm greater than Jonah. I'm greater than the sacrifices they were making to get repentance. I'm the ultimate sacrifice for sin is what Jesus was saying. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you. Jesus. We're getting ready to find out the fourth misconception or the third misconception about Jonah. First one, he was on the boat that he paid to be on. He did not stow away. Second misconception, he did die. He People say he didn't die in the whale's belly. God sustained him, but he did die and God brought him back to life. A resurrection like with Christ on the third night he rose. Hallelujah. Holy
Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory to the Lord. Amen. Listen to this, y'all. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let every man turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn? Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger? That word repent means to change his mind. That we perish not. And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil. He changed his mind of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. God did not lift his hand of grace and mercy. He gave them another chance. Listen to me, y'all. Do you know that on the 50th year of the jubilation of Nineveh, they were destroyed because they went right back after 50 years on the dot. They went back into the world. And God said, I'm going to destroy it now. That's just like a child disobeying a parent and thinking that the time for the whippings come to an end and you know the, the parent gave grace so they think they can get away with it and keep doing it again and then the the trap fell shut on the head of Nineveh. God said no more grace on that matter. I gave them a chance and now they're going right back into what I called them out of. They are doing what now this was like the third generation of them. The first, first generation, they're with the Lord. The Bible says that. Jesus said that. They are with him. Their names were recorded in the record book of Zion. So they are with the Lord. That king and his people belong to God. They are with him. But the other ones that followed after that generation of Nineveh went to their own, own way and went back to their worship of their false gods, which was Easter and was uh they gone. But it's funny, God, God allowed a, a fish to swallow Jonah, and their, their God was a fish. <laughs> it got their attention. They thought that there was a word from Dagon, but it was a word from the true God, and Dagon got gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, glory. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Chapter 4. And then I'm done. Like I told you, I was going to read the whole book of Jonah tonight to y'all. And I hope you've enjoyed this message. Thank you, Jesus. There's a lot of meat in it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Jonah chapter 4, verse 1. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord God. And said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before thee unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God, and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I, I beseech thee my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. He knew better. But that is what Jonah was telling God. He said, this is why I did not want to go to Nineveh, because I knew you would forgive their sins. Jonah wanted to see them destroyed because of the wickedness of the city. It, it, it goes deeper than that. Do you know that Easter or Esther, uh, Easter, Easter, the goddess Easter, let me show you this about her. The men would rape the women on the altar of Easter. And check this out. What's going to happen here? There, there was a birth. Their birth theme would be around December, in December. And the Christians that was preaching against this wickedness, they were killing them. And they were dipping their blood in the eggs that represented fertility coming from, 
coming from the church, from the coming from the people, from these women that was raped. They would give them eggs and they would dip the blood of Christians. The, these eggs in the blood of Christians. You'd find that in the um, history of the um, two Babylons book. You'd find that. I encourage you to read it, get a hold of it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, you'll see how pagan it really is in this country. I'm telling you, we have a lot of paganism. I mean, even the Catholic Church does a event that they call the White Horse once a year, and they will cause the priest to walk through the fire. And if the priest is not, he'll be... Uh, made into a costume of a horse and if the horse is not burned or he don't feel the fire it's going to be a good year but if the horse feels the fire it's going to be a bad year well that's how do you groundhog's day come on church get it together we are in a pagan nation just like in the days of Nineveh and right now it's getting ready to be set up with the day of Tav Tom is getting ready to hit. There's going to be an X, and it's going to come across the cities of the places that are spiritually named Nineveh. It's getting ready to happen in just a few days. I mean in just a few days. And the other day, the red heifer was killed in Jerusalem. Watch this. Do you know the very place where the red heifer was born that they got it from in Texas is going to be one of the places that that X, that Tav crosses? Ooh, ooh, ain't that prophetic? My Lord Jesus. God ain't playing with his church, friends. He wants us to repent and follow after him. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. But Jonah was in the wrong heart and in the wrong frame of mind because of Jonah chapter 4 verses 1 through 3. He said, this is why I didn't want to come to Nineveh because I didn't want them to be saved. I knew you'd forgive them of their sins. But listen to this. Then said the Lord, dost thou well to be angry? So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city and they made him a booth. He made a little place to sit and sat under it, he made a, a shelter, a booth, a, a, a covering. Just like they do right at Passover, right before they look for the coming of the Lord, they create a booth, a, a, a covering where they can, where they worship and everything and pray outside in that booth, in that covering. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the Lord God, wait a minute, wait, 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 and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. And the Lord God prepared a gourd and made it to come up and Jonah and cover Jonah that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceedingly glad of the gourd but god prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day and it smote the gourd that it withered and it came to pass when the sun did arise that god prepared a venomous east wind a violent east wind and the sun beat upon the head of jonah that he fainted and wished in himself to die and said it is better for me to die than to live and god said to jonah dost thou well to be angry for the gourd and he said i do well to be angry even unto death after god is speaking to jonah in this book of jonah we read we, we don't find where god ever used him again there's only one time that god fulfilled a prophecy concerning jonah and that was in 2 Kings chapter 14, verse 25. That's the only time it records that God gave a prophecy through Jonah outside of Nineveh, and God allowed that prophecy to come to pass. Are you hearing me? God didn't use Jonah that much because he was very hard-headed and hard-hearted as well. 
Listen to this, though, y'all. Then said the Lord, thou hast, thou hast had pity on the gourd for that which thou hast not labored, neither made it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. Should I not spare Nineveh, the great city wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand? And also so much cattle. He said, I want to give them mercy. I want them to, to come to me. They had the provision to make offerings at that time to the Lord. And he said, I want them to come to me. I don't want them to go to hell. And God was telling Jonah that. But Jonah, Jonah 4, 1 through 3, he thought he could change God's mind. That's why he went down to see what God was going to do with the city. So, see, the third misconception, people say, well, he didn't want to go to Nineveh because he didn't want to die. Jonah was not afraid to die. He begged God to kill him. So, if he begged God to kill him, he wouldn't mind them killing him either, would he? But they wanted him to prophesy. They wanted him to stick around. He wanted to get out of there. And you know what? Now I'm going into a little bit more deeper detail concerning Nineveh here. But I just want you all to stick around with me to see what the Lord's going to show you. Amen. After Jonah went to Nineveh in 612, Nineveh was destroyed 50 years later because Nineveh fell back into sin. Once God delivers you from sin, don't get back into it. Stay away from it. He said we're to shun evil. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. They had served Dagon, the fish god, found in 1 Samuel 5 and 4, that actually bowed before God. The fish god did. The Bible said when they came in the next day for three days, Dagon was bowed prostrate before God. Dagon was prostrate before God for three days. And on the fourth day, they came into the temple of Dagon. And all, all that was left to him was his stump. <laughs> Glory to God. The whole head and hands of Dagon had been shattered. Even his, even his tail was... God whipped that demon's tail. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God in heaven. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And it said only his stump was left to him. I love that. God said, I'll leave you a stump, chump. I'll leave you a stump, but as far as you get, you ain't getting nothing else. Everything that is going to be putting itself in front of God, if it ain't of God or for his glory, it's going to be destroyed, my friends. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost up in here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God in heaven. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen to this, y'all. There was an eclipse during the time of Jonah being in Nineveh. Preaching repentance, according to rabbis. Now check this out, y'all. Jonah, out of all of the 12 minor prophets in the Bible, do you, do you know that, this is interesting, study has shown that Muhammad called Jonah his God-given brother, his God-given brother. It's interesting. He is mentioned more times in the Quran and in the letter writings of uh, Muhammad than anybody else. Jonah is talked about in the letters of Muhammad several times. Now check this out. I'm not going to teach you about, I ain't trying to teach you about Muhammad and all that. I'm just saying this prophet that was disobedient there was somebody that ended up liking him. And, and this prophet, prophet Muhammad, fell from 
the truth and tried to kill off the Christians. Watch this. He declared in his letters that his people, excuse me, had killed Jonah. And the, the father of Jonah, according to the letters of him that he had written, that his father had been killed by the Muslims. But check this out. If that was the case, he was a Ninevite. Mm, ain't that interesting, my friends? That's just some that that's just an interesting uh piece of information of when I was studying with the rabbis that um we found out that there was letters that he had written where he claimed that Jonah was his, his God given brother. And and that his people had killed Jonah and his father. So that's interesting. I mean, uh, and that, and that's where they get in the uh, play that was made about Jonah, and I can't remember what it's called. I wish Sister White would write that down. Uh, but it was a play that was made about the life of Jonah, and they recorded it online. And according to the play, Jonah's father is killed by the Ninevites. So it's actually not even biblical, but it's a part of history. The Ninevites are recorded to have killed him according to that, according to those letters written by Muhammad. So it's all interesting. It's all theory and conspiracy right there, you know, in Jerusalem. You know, just like we have, thank you, Holy Ghost, just like we have conspiracy theories in America today, they have conspiracy theories there in their country. Okay, are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not saying that what they are saying is the truth, but what I'm saying it is it was a conspiracy that they had going on. Sight and Sound Live Production of Jonah. Thank you, Sister White. Amen. Glory to God. So Sight and Sound Production made the play of Jonah and the Jonah night, the uh the jo uh the people of Nineveh was supposed to have killed Jonah, or the, the father of Jonah, but there's no biblical evidence for it. There's no historical evidence for it except from what they get from those writings. But it's interesting that they would even add those writings to a play. I'm just saying that's interesting to me. But do you know the name, this is interesting, y'all. I'm not picking on anybody tonight. I love you enough to tell you the truth, just like God loved Nineveh, enough to spare them and they would repent. I'm saying this prophetically by the Holy Ghost of God. I've already sat down and talked on the phone with my rabbis, and they've agreed that this is the word of God. I'm getting ready to release a prophetic word tonight. Sister Rita, God bless you. I love you. Amen. Kevin, God bless you. Wayne, God bless you. Everybody tuning in, God bless you. I love you in the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Do you know, now this, this is for the people out there that are trapped in the world of the Muslims. They don't know the true God of the Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ as God in flesh. See, the name Allah that they serve in the Muslim world, the name number of his name is 666, which would be the number of the beast, Revelation 13 and 18. Wouldn't it be interesting that the Muslims are the ones that the Antichrist rises through and tries to destroy Jerusalem and make it his kingdom instead of the kingdom of God? It would, it would make sense that this creature from the, the pit, would come in his own name. Jesus said, I come in my Father's name, you receive me not. If another will come in his own name, him you shall receive. They offer a mark, the Muslims do, upon their right hand or upon their forehead, the right side of their body, the right hand or the forehead. They, they offer a mark. It's interesting to me. The Muslims believe in cutting off the head. Decapitation.
resurrection. Well, it says that the Antichrist will receive a mortal wound, a fatal wound to his head and be killed. And after three days, his head is restored to him. Is it possible that during the assassination of the Antichrist, that that is what is going to happen, that he's going to lose his head, and then supernaturally, demonically, it would be given back to him. I, that's an interesting thought right there. That's just something for you to know on tonight. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So I just wanted to tell y'all tonight, we are in the last of the last days. You cannot play with grace, and you need to turn to Jesus before it's too late. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God in heaven. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Jonah tried to change God's mind, but guess what? When God makes up his mind to save somebody he's gonna save them amen glory to god he said mercy he, he said concerning his own word he said i save who i want to save thank you jesus praise god in heaven amen thank you lord jesus glory to god he said i have mercy on whom i desire to have mercy i save who i want to save amen glory to god thank you jesus Amen. Glory to the Lord. See, like I said, Nineveh served Dagon, 1 Samuel 5 and 14, and Estar, Jeremiah 2 and 17. God condemns that place, that worship. I'm sorry, John, uh, Jeremiah 7 and 18 jeremiah 7 18 he said you worship the queen of heaven what do they call mary in the catholic church the queen of heaven Woo! mary the muslims and the catholic church they all tied into one thing it's all one beast system are you hearing me praise the lord lord jesus glory hallelujah Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's why John, the brother, uh, that's why James, the brother of John of Zebedee, was killed for preaching against the paganism in the day of Rome. Acts 12, 1 through 7. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You got to make a choice. He said, those that are called by the Lamb, they love not their life unto death. They were willing to lay down their life for the gospel's sake. So I want to let you know something. If they were willing to lay down their life for the gospel, Jesus said, if any man tries to save his life, he'll lose it. But if any man loses his life for my sake and the sake of the gospel, we'll find it. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Ghost in heaven. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory to the Lord. Amen. I tell you what, as much as Jonah was known by the world, I would rather be known in heaven than to be known by this world ever. Amen. Glory to God in heaven. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Well, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let me give that prophetic utterance from the Lord, and then I will release y'all out of the service. We'll pray and bless y'all in the name of Jesus. The Lord told me I was to release this word tonight. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. This is what the Lord told me. This is what the sovereign Lord has said. I will give to them blood for blood. The ashes of prayer before me has reached its tipping point. My spirit is stirred both to anger and to gladness, says the Lord. Anger for the adultery of this, of those who claim my name but have not been called by it. And gladness that soon my bride will be with her bridegroom, says the Lord. 
glean the fields while you can, for soon it shall be put on fire, says the Lord of hosts. Repent. I will shake that which can be shaken in the fury of mine anger with the passion, a passion that will burn with a fire, says the Lord, in that day, in these last of the last days. Hear, O oh, now, thus saith the Lord to the nations, the Lord God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, Forever the bridge of the cross stands between you and death. The blood will be either a witness against you or it will be for you. Come and plead your case, says the Lord, and I will hear you. If you will truly repent. For this is a spiritual Nineveh, this nation, America. Will you repent and will you be saved, declares the Lord Jesus. That is what the Lord told me to release to the nations. And I'm so glad that the Lord had me read the entire book of Jonah and everything that the Lord wanted me to say about Jonah was said tonight. Everything is written. Everything has been said that the Father has given me. And I want you to know during this time of darkness that's getting ready to come on the earth, it's a time of repentance. It's a time of tov. It's a time to be marked by God during this time of tribulation coming onto the earth. Because the Bible said we have not been appointed unto wrath, amen, but to receive salvation through Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9, we have not been appointed unto wrath, but to receive salvation through Jesus Christ. He wants to redeem us and take us out of this world by the shedding of his blood. Those that come to him will be covered under his blood. And when the storm, the storm that is coming for this world, just like in the days of Noah, the time of the storm is coming. And when it gets here, only those that have been marked by God only those that have been secured with their soul by the blood and are in the boat of redemption will be saved. Amen. Glory to God. There was only one door and one window. Why? Because there's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. That's the only way you're going to stop this storm that's coming into your life and be saved. I'm going to pray with you right now. First thing that Jesus had Noah do when he got out of the boat after that long, long wait. If you go back, it was actually a year that he was on that boat. He got off the boat after a year. The waters had resided, and now the earth was ready to be replenished and refurbished with God's glory and with the people that Noah had on the ark. Watch this. The first thing they did was sacrifice before the Lord. Blood was spilt on a new earth, a new cleansed earth. And now it's gone to horrible again. It, 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 it's gone to where it needs to be redeemed again. Hallelujah. The earth needs to be cleansed. One more time. But this time he's cleansing it by fire if you want to escape the fire that's coming you need to pray this prayer with me dear Jesus I come to you a sinner I believe that you died on the cross that God the Father raised you from the dead 
and I am saved. Lord Jesus, wash me, cleanse me, fill me with your precious Holy Spirit that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. If you have prayed that prayer, I want you to write me. Let me know what God has done for you. Uh, <laughs> our full revival at yahoo.com. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Now, I'm excited for you. I want to send you out a certificate of sonship. If you pray that, send me your email address, your name, your number. I mean, yeah, you just send me your number. You just send me your name and your address number, and I'll send you out a certificate of sonship. Let heaven and earth have a record of what's happened to you today tonight amen glory to god i love you god bless you i'll see you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven if you're sick in your body i curse every spirit of infirmity i command a creative miracle in your head to the soul of your feet from the body part rooms in heaven in jesus name father fill everybody watching with the holy ghost and fire in jesus name amen amen and amen i love you god bless bye-bye